Hey guys, I'm Barry with Reclaimer New. And I'm Taylor. We are here to show you a cabinet tutorial. You guys have asked, so we want to show you how we do cabinets. I would say this, there's no real right way. Taylor, what do you think? Yep, definitely no way to mess it up. Pretty easy to do. Yep, Taylor's done her cabinets. We've done some stuff in our house. We're going to show you kind of the first steps. Taylor, what's your first step? So my first step as a personal preference is to get all the drawers and doors off. Um, so that's a matter of taking all the hinges out and whatnot, but that's honestly a personal preference. You don't have to do that. You could paint them right on the frames if you want to. Yeah, I'd say if you're doing like a vanity or something small like that, you can leave them on there and just paint it. Um, maybe take the handles off it because that's an easy thing to do. Um, but if you're in a kitchen, I would take them all off. First thing I would do is I would just take a little piece of um, painter's tape, put on the back and just kind of number all your cabinets and kind of make a map of your kitchen. So it makes it easier to put everything back when you're done. Next thing, cleaning. Yep, crud cutter if you want to, especially in kitchens because it'll help break down all that grease and grime that's built up over the years. If you do decide to do that, you're just gonna wipe it off with the um, cloth and water essentially just to get any chemicals from that so you have a really nice clean surface. Yep. You can also do it with just Dawn um, soap and a little bit of water. You can wash it down with that too. But we do sell crud cutter with our cabinet kit. You can find our cabinet kit on our website. But it, spray it on there. It works really great. Great. It's biodegradable. It's non-toxic. Works great for that. So I've already started this one here, getting that first coat on. What are we doing, Taylor? So really, that first coat coverage is going to be pretty light. Um, you're going to see a lot of wood showing through, and that's okay. Um, there's two different ways to paint, and that's going to be with the grain going in one direction or going any which direction you want. There's no right or wrong. It's honestly a personal preference. Um, but this round brush that he's using is really nice, especially for cabinets like this with a lot of cracks and crevices. So you can kind of stipple and get in those areas that are harder to reach. Right. The reason Svenska Blue. Am I saying that right? Yep. Svenska Blue. It's kind of one of those trendy colors, which I like it a lot. But it's one of those things, too, that you're going to find that this is so easy to do that if you don't like the color in a few years, you can change it. We stir this paint, that's a big thing. Stir, 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 stir until you think you should stir. And then stir some more, stir some more. And really get that paint all mixed up and that's gonna help you out a lot. It is a water-based paint, so you can add a little bit of water if you wanted to thin it down, but not too much, maybe 10%. And then just remember chalk paint always sticks best to chalk paint. So your first coat might not look that great, but your second coat is gonna get that full coverage you want. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're able to see it in the video, but you can see both these pieces and we've done this one already, we just finished that one. Um, we're not really worried about covers like Taylor says. We're just getting paint on there just enough almost as a primer coat. And we're going to let that dry for probably about two hours or so. Um, you're going to want to get completely dry so there's no wet spots because the paint, the next coat of paint will actually pull that paint up. So first coat, just get a little bit on there. Let it sit for two hours. Let it be dry. And you're good to go. All right, that first coat is dry. Now we're going back with that second coat. Taylor, talk me through it. Yes, so now we're getting that fuller coverage. Again, no rhyme or reason on how you apply it, but we're using that round brush so Barry can really stipple into those cracks and crevices. Uh, this is that process where you're just gonna make sure you haven't missed any spots, that you're getting all the corners, all the edges of your cabinet doors, and grabbing any paint runs before they dry. I think I love about Andy Sloan paint. I've used a lot of paint over the years. I've painted houses, I've painted all sorts of things. It's just how easy it goes on. It's just that thickness of the paint makes it so easy to work in the spaces. It makes it so easy to get that coverage. As you can see over here with me, this door has already been done. That second coat, because Annie Sloan always sticks better to Annie Sloan chalk paint, um, gets all that full coverage that you need, no wood showing through at all. You may find yourself needing to do a third coat just in the sense you're touching up in one or two areas, but very unlikely with Annie Sloan chalk paint. So tell me, if I if I want it to be super smooth, Taylor, what can I do? If I want you know to get rid of all the texture in the paint and stuff like that, what can we do? Well, some say going in one direction will certainly help that, but actually sanding in between coats very lightly could help. Um, or if you wanted to use a roller instead of a brush, that would help as well. Um, this is a water-based paint, so technically you could add water. There's quite a few handful of different ways you could do that, none of which are required. Right. So there it is. We have good coverage on both these pieces. The next step is going to be wax. Um, there's been question about, you know, how do you finish these with the durability and things like that. Guys, we have sold thousands of canes of paint, canes of paint, <laughs> paints, cans. <laughs> what are they? We've sold what? We've sold thousands of paint thousands. cans. And uh, um, we don't get complaints about durability. It's just not an issue. People love it. And the wax is really the best um, for kitchen cabinets even, I would say. And uh, we're going to show you that tip right now. 
So now on to clear wax. Clear wax is your first thing you do after the paint dries. Taylor, what are we doing here? So this clear wax is really giving you durability on your cabinets. It's gonna help prevent scratches and wear and tear over time. Um, consistency is key for this. So doing two to three coats is perfect because it's gonna help catch any areas you missed on the first time. But something to keep in mind, my rule of thumb anyways, is less is more. So you don't wanna get too heavy handed and you don't wanna go through a whole can um, if you don't need to anyways. So thin, even coats. Um, and Barry's just applying this first one here, no rhyme or reason on how you apply it, other than probably working in small sections at a time, finishing one door before moving to the next. It's also got a pointed tip and it's rounded just like the paintbrush. So as you hold more product, you can also stipple again in those cracks and crevices to get areas you won't be able to reach with a rag. Right, and if that rag is that, once you do put that first coat on there, Taylor, what I'm doing with the rag, it's just going over and getting some of that chunks out of there. Yeah, really lightly, so you don't have to do it very hard, but again, with that less is more, wiping with that rag is gonna help get any excess wax off, and it'll also help grab any dirt particles that might've landed in the wax. And with the wax, it's hard to kind of know where you're going. That's why we're doing those thin coats and doing multiple coats. We'll probably do two or three of those, like, like she said. And uh, um, you gotta kind of catch the light in your room to kind of see where that wax is hitting, so. Make sure you get wax over everything. There we go. Good to go. So our next deck now is to kind of call it antiquing, call it, call it you know, adding glazing. character, call it glazing, mm -hmm. um, to get that kind of look. Um, we do that with dark waxes. Um, Anderson has how many different dark waxes? Um, well, let's see here, three different colors, dark being brown, black, or white. Yep, and that is to go over the clear, so make sure you clear wax first. You're always going to clear wax first because that allows you kind of a little more play in what you're doing with the dark wax. And we're going to specifically use dark wax on this one right here to get kind of that glazed look. Um, some people will add mineral spirits to this to kind of and brush over the whole thing to get really a glazed look over everything. I'm specifically today just going to hit these high points and low points on these two cabinets to kind of show what that does to that. This is a, a cabinet here that's been glazed all over the dark wax over what looks like to be a French linen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now keep in mind when you start this process, you're gonna want your clear wax to be as soft as possible, meaning you're gonna be doing your last coat of clear and your first coat of dark all at the same time. So it really gives that dark a place to kind of move through. And then you can also reapply the clear at any point in time to get any of the dark off because it works as an eraser. So there's really no way to mess up. No. So I'm just gonna go in those areas and just hit it and you first start you're thinking what does that look like but you're going to see here in a second how forgiving this really is even those blotchy areas that we worked through on this i like hitting those edges and those corners to kind of add that like i say that little antique look that glazing look now barry is using a cheaper chip brush just because it's really nice and thin to get in some of these smaller areas you can also use your regular wax brush just make sure you clean it really well when you're mixing between the clear and the dark waxes. Both of these are gonna come in any of your kits, um, so you can really use either one, it's personal preference. Perfect. So that clean, lint-free rag now, I'm gonna go over, and I'm just gonna kind of push that wax down those areas, and it's gonna wipe it off those high spots, but force it down into those areas. Now what Barry's doing is he's putting it in the cracks and crevices to give this cabinet a little bit more depth. It's really similar to what you see on this one. Another way you can do this is to apply it all over, like you saw that cabinet a second ago where it gives a full glaze. There's a, quite a few different ways to do it and that neither of them are wrong. It's just how you'd like your cabinets to look. And if you like that farmhouse look, that really kind of shabby chic look that's still around, um, sandpaper, um, after you clear wax, go over with sandpaper and hit those edges and that's gonna allow some of that wood to show through. And it's just also a cool way of doing this. Definitely. If you decide to sand, just be sure to re-wax after that in those areas so you know that all those are still protected. And once you have to the point you like, let it dry for a while, go back with that clear wax. We're going to hit it one more time. And then is when you can come and get that glossy look that you want if you want that. Um, after, before it dries completely, before it cures completely, you can go over with a clean, lint-free rag and you're going to buff it. Small circular motions and that's going to give some sheen to that, which makes it a little bit easier to clean and wipe off. Yep. Then it's just waiting time. You've got a small curing process. You can still use your cabinets. You can put them back on the hinges. Just know they're gonna be a little soft and malleable for a few weeks. And that's it guys. Kitchen cabinets, you can do it. Buy the starter kit if you wanna just start with that 
or buy our cabinet kit and you can get right to work on your cabinet. It comes with three cans of paint, some waxes that you'll need. It comes with the brushes you need, the rags, card the cutter. Card cutter, everything you need, guys. We're going to take care of you. So we want to take care of Reclaim Renew. We do ship this all over the country. We can ship it to you. But if you are in St. Louis area and want to come into our store, we're going to give you even more information and as much information as you need. Taylor can help you out. Jen can help you out. We'd love to help you. Thanks, guys. Always feel free to call us if you have any questions. We're more than happy to go over this again with you. We'll see you. Thanks. Thanks.